The UDT SEAL story begins in May 1943, when naval combat demolition units were formed to clear the approaches to the Normandy coast for the Allied landings. These units later became the underwater demolition teams, which cleared the beaches for island landings in the Western Pacific. During the Korean conflict, the teams were called upon to gather intelligence and conduct commando raids in addition to clearing beaches. As a direct result of President Kennedy's interest in unconventional warfare, the first two SEAL teams were formed in 1962. When the teams deployed to Vietnam, they proved their worth many times over, becoming the most decorated organizations emerging from that war. Where do SEALs come from? They come literally from every Navy and civilian occupation. Since SEAL duty is dangerous work, all personnel are volunteers. They must possess the highest levels of endurance, aggressiveness, and personal determination. After passing a physical fitness test, which includes a timed swim, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and a timed run, volunteers are issued orders to BUDS, or Basic Underwater Demolition SEAL Training. BUDS training is conducted at the Naval Special Warfare Center in Coronado, California, for 25 weeks of training. This arduous course is divided into three distinct phases, each of which all students must complete. The basic conditioning phase, or first phase, consists of running, swimming, and basic skill instruction. Calisthenics harden flabby muscles grown used to soft living. You do the exercise. Trainees live on the run, whether they're timed beach runs or simple formation runs to chow. They begin to learn that there is nothing quite like running to make a man reach deep down inside himself. The obstacle course simulates the physical challenges often encountered in combat. Each week, trainees must better their previous times. As the weeks pass, times drop dramatically. Long distance swims. Through extended physical exertion, Students learn to build the endurance and confidence needed to complete what is without a doubt the toughest training offered by the United States military. Basic surf passage and rock portage prepare trainees for landings with tactical equipment loads. Usually the sixth week of training brings each man as close to his physical and emotional breaking point as possible to see if he has what it takes to keep going when the going gets rough. In training, as in combat, SEALs work in tightly knit groups, each man acting in harmony with his teammates. All right. Almost there, six. Almost, almost.
persevering under miserable conditions such as these can mean the difference between the success or failure of a mission. If the students decide conditions are too harsh, all they need to say is, I quit, and they are immediately disenrolled. Those who make it through Hell Week emerge confident that they have the stamina to overcome the physical and mental demands and still be ready to fight when fighting is needed. Once Hell Week is completed, trainees are ready to learn the basic SEAL skills. They receive practical experience in hydrographic reconnaissance, in which swimmer pairs come ashore to reconnoiter the beach in order to provide the critical information needed to conduct amphibious landings. The second phase of training concentrates on land warfare and demolition techniques. Repelling techniques is one of 45 land warfare skills students must learn. Small unit tactics, compass navigation, and map work prepare trainees for San Clemente Island, where students also learn to effectively and safely use a variety of weapons and pyrotechnics. Basic marksmanship and combat shooting techniques which emphasize safety, accuracy, and efficiency are developed both individually and by squad training exercises. Training events include strictly controlled live fire maneuvers under the direction of experienced instructors. Traditional UDT cast and recovery techniques may still be employed when combat swimmers must place demolitions on man-made or natural obstacles to clear the beach lanes for amphibious landings. Instruction in demolition techniques include classroom work and practical application during intense training exercises.
days since training began, those who survive the rigorous course are ready for assignment to SEAL teams in Coronado, California, or Little Creek, Virginia. Once assigned to the teams, new SEALs find that their careers in naval special warfare are just beginning. Since SEALs need to continuously expand their capabilities in many areas, they quickly learn that training is never over. After graduation, SEALs learn to use state-of-the-art equipment, such as the Mark 15 underwater breathing apparatus, which enables the SEALs to dive much deeper and longer than conventional scuba permits. Selected BUDS graduates are assigned tours of duties in the SEAL delivery vehicle teams. These units, made up of SEALs and Navy technical specialists, provide unique transportation for combat swimmers. A modern version of the mini-subs used in World War II, the SEAL delivery vehicle, or SDV, is an important component of the special warfare inventory. Shortly after being assigned to their teams, new SEALs attend the U.S. Army Airborne Course in Fort Benning, Georgia. However, this is only the beginning of their parachuting careers as they soon become qualified in basic and advanced military freefall techniques. As advanced training continues, SEALs develop patience and a keen awareness of the dangerous world in which they work. Patience and awareness are critical elements of success in so much of what SEALs do on a regular basis, as in rock climbing. As time goes on, SEALs frequently use the training they receive from both BUDS and the advanced courses. The SEAL's ancestor, the Frogman of World War II, was entirely water-oriented. The modern SEAL is capable of striking from a seaward direction into virtually any area or type of terrain on Earth. The U.S. Navy SEAL must continue to grow and develop mentally and physically in order to effectively fight in all geographical and climatic environments. Arctic regions challenge the man to overcome the human and equipment problems associated with extreme cold. Desert operational planning and tactical execution must be exact in this hostile terrain where distance, food, and water problems pose unique survival challenges. The humidity and obstacles encountered in the jungle tax one's strength, but they also provide a cloak which allows a SEAL patrol to close upon the enemy or simply vanish.
Today's seal upholds the proud tradition of naval special warfare. The history of the teams, from World War II's combat demolition units to today's multifaceted SEAL and SDV teams, has been one of accomplishment and professionalism. The men who have written this history have led challenging and satisfying careers. Each one has truly become, in his own way, someone special.